Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch The Mandalorian Episode 1 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. But I guess that's not going to happen this year. Probably not. From what I remember from, I think it was Empire Strikes Back, those people aren't actually dead, they're just frozen. The biggest problem for humans when it comes to freezing ourselves is that our bodies are mostly water, so if you did have your body temperature drop below freezing, then your blood would actually freeze itself and harden, which would cause damage to all of your organs. Certain animals like the arctic ground squirrel and wood frog have ice nucleators in their blood that allow them to freeze themselves for winter and then defrost themselves for the spring. These animals will undergo the process of hibernation every single year, and like the arctic ground squirrel, its body temperature will drop from 99 degrees Fahrenheit Fahrenheit to 27 degrees Fahrenheit or if you're not in the United States it'll go from like 37 degrees Celsius to negative 3 degrees Celsius and along with that their blood will actually like it'll be pretty much sub-zero temperatures and their heart rate drops to one beat per minute but they still stay alive and they do this every year. Their nerves have adapted as well like when these animals actually freeze themselves they don't feel cold their body just enter a hibernative state. For certain people that decide to freeze themselves after their death, it well for one it's like a hundred thousand dollars and I mean, well this dude got it for free, but if you really want to do it for a human then you have to be legally dead and then they have to remove all of your blood and they replace it with a solution that while you're in a sub-zero temperature that your organs don't actually fail on you even though you're legally dead so this whole thing is kind of weird and then you hope and pray to God that somebody figures out a way to defrost and wake you back up in the future. time for this. Do you have a land speeder or speeder bike that I could hire? You are a Mandalorian. What was the point of teaching the Mandalorian how to actually ride one of those things in the first place? Like I don't I don't actually remember because I've seen this episode before but I can't recall what the actual reason was because he could have just like driven something down there like almost every vehicle in Star Wars actually like just hovers over the ground so I don't know why like was it just to sell toys? Like, I mean, what was the real purpose? Like, why did he absolutely have to use that, like, dinosaur, like, tadpole-looking thing to get him across the desert? Even in the very opening of the show, we had that one guy drive over ice with that one view. I mean, he was eaten alive, but that wasn't the car's fault. Like, well, I'm just wondering, like, what is it about this terrain that specifically requires that animal to cross it? <laughs> That bounty droid is probably the the best bounty hunter in all of like that galaxy. I mean for for like I, I mean for quite a few reasons actually. Like for one, this bounty droid is just a machine. It actually has no emotions that get in the way of it completing its job. Whereas the Mandalorian, he definitely does, right? That's the whole premise of the TV show. But like one thing too about this droid is that like it doesn't actually care for money, right? So whoever's sending it I'm wondering why didn't they just send like three or four of them and why not did you send a droid like in, the, in broad daylight when you could have sent like multiple of these things at night when everyone's asleep and they all have perfect night vision and perfect aim and perfect memory it's like why why would you only send one at this time like that doesn't make sense humans and other humanoid or biological animals and that we've seen in the star wars universe have certain issues that robots never have to deal with, like as some of the few I just named, and one of the other ones is that they don't actually have the skeletal structure to like turn their bodies, like the robot can turn in 360 degrees of motion like constantly, right, and it can just shoot in any direction, just really the electric motor inside of that droid is far faster than the reaction speed of any like organic I mean, human or Mandalorian is like any life form around it. This robot is way faster at reacting to anything. Weapons technology is certainly moving to a place of more autonomy than human use, and it was for the reasons labeled, right? It's like even if this droid dies, like it's you haven't lost anything. Like you can just make like ten more of those in a factory. Whereas like if you lost a human, it's like you've actually lost like someone who could really contribute a lot to society. Whereas like 
just use robots, right? So that also, that's what people are looking for. Like, you, you got to really ask yourself, like, in, in the future, I mean, the Star Wars universe, I don't know if this is actually what's going to happen once uh, humans start to, like, distance into space and when we start to visit other planets and, you know, pretty much, like, communicate with other alien life. I don't know if this is how the future will end up. But one thing for sure I'm, I can confirm now is that you need to ask yourself, can a robot actually replace your job? Because, you know, like, they, they don't care if they have their morning coffee. They don't care that their, like, a significant other is going through some stuff. They don't have any emotions to deal with, right? It's, like, all they know how to do is, like, the functions that they're programmed how to do. So, it's, I mean, robots have no, like, because they have no emotions, it's not always, like, a good thing for them. They can't make music, right? They can't make comedy. They can't do art. So, it's, like, there are certain things that humans can do that robots cannot, but... That that list of things is getting shorter and shorter. So I definitely think it's important that you like whatever you choose to do, make sure that the robot cannot do it better than you.